Okaidi, welcome to another Japan Life reading vlog. It's been a few weeks since I recorded my last vlog. I think the last one was uh, cherry blossoms, the cherry blossom season in Japan, and I was reading some arcs that I've since finished, uh, Elder Epoch and things like that. So I took a little bit of a break from filming vlogs, but people really seemed to enjoy them and I was enjoying making them. So I thought I would get back to it. It is now May, which is also my due date month. And uh, someone actually left a comment on my last vlog saying that they liked the balance between like reading life, Japan life, and also kind of a pregnancy kind of vlog. It was kind of my journey <laughs> along the way as well. And I really, that comment made me realize that I think I would like to try to capture a little bit more of that on film for posterity. Not that this is going to become like a mom channel or a pregnancy channel or anything like that. But I think it, it is nice to have my thoughts on those things recorded for like posterity. I don't know. I just really liked that comment. It made me think about these vlogs in a different way. So I thought that I would start a new one for May. So let's start with my reading life, my current reads. Uh, the first one is The Shadow of What Was Lost. I am on page 39 of this book and I am really enjoying it so far. I'm not far into it, but the, the writing is quite big. And those 39 pages that I read, I read in one sitting. So I think this is going to be one that I can really sit down and blow through. And tonight I actually really plan to do that. I'm going to get comfy on the couch. Uh, I have a, um, a pastry, like a cinnamon bun-esque pastry that Hata's mom brought me. So I'm gonna settle on the couch with, with that and, uh, you know, put on my, my, do my nighttime face skincare and settle in with this and read uh, tonight. So I'm really looking forward to that. It very much has the classic fantasy vibes that I've been in the mood for recently, so. Then I'm also like 13% into uh, Legacy of Brick and Bone. This is an arc that I got from uh, Crystal, Crystal Matar. Uh, she also, the first book in the series is uh, Legacy of the Bright Wash, which I scream about on my channel all the time. <laughs> so I was lucky enough to get this arc before it came out, but I've been reading this very slowly. I'm enjoying reading it very slowly, but I feel like some of the themes that it deals with, one of those being motherhood, is kind of hitting really close to home to the point where I can just read it in little snippets. I'm enjoying every snippet that I'm reading, but I'm just making sure to take it in small pieces. So I haven't finished it yet, but the book is now officially out. So if you loved Legacy of the Bright Wash, or if you don't know about it, I'll have the review linked down below. Please go check it out. There's a review on my channel for it. But I highly recommend the first book in the series, and the second book is now available for general purchase. And the other book that I have just sitting next to me right now <laughs> is uh, something from my mom. She got it for me. Uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama's uh, Farewell Speeches. Michelle Obama is one of my heroes in this life. I love her so much. <laughs> so uh, in the way that I'm not interested in like celebrity lives, I'm very interested in Michelle Obama. So my mom got this for me thinking that I would enjoy it. But she was like, actually, I read it on the plane ride over <laughs> to Japan the last time they were here. And she's like, it's actually really not that good. Uh, she's like, they're not really special speeches. They're just speeches that they gave at some point in their lives. And were put in here but it's so short and the writing is like look at this the words are huge so I don't know she said it's not very good but it's cute it's sitting here I might pick this up <laughs> I don't know why but um part of me wants to read this so so that's what I'm in the middle of currently I also started watching Shit's Creek yesterday and I was gonna actually read A Shadow of What Was Lost yesterday it was all set up for it and then I was like well let me just watch an episode or two or of Shit's Creek which I've never watched before but everyone that I that knows me and that knows the show is like you're gonna love it it's it's like made for you <laughs> and as soon as I watched the first episode I was like well, this is going to be the rest of my night now. <laughs> and I finished watching season one in one day, like, bless my heart. <laughs> so I'm very tempted to continue with that. But no, I think I'm going to read tonight. I need to give my eyes a break from looking at a screen. Um, I also just finished filming. So I'm going to do some editing tonight. Yesterday was a baby checkup day. So Hayato and I went to the hospital for that yesterday. And due to just some health circumstances that I have going on in my life, I need to go to a very specific hospital that can care for my body's needs and it's a bit far away. So it's like a haul <laughs> when we have to go there and I have to go there like every week. So uh, bless Hayato's heart, he's just a wonderful partner and, and always goes with me um, because everything is in Japanese as well. And I am very 
good at Japanese, but there's a lot of medical terms that your girl doesn't know. <laughs> so having him there, it just means the world. So uh, we went to go do that yesterday and then had some errands to run after. And I find that at this point in like month eight of my pregnancy that I am exhausted <laughs> after I have a big day like that. The next day is just shot for me. And I very much felt that today. So I'm just, I'm looking forward to just chilling tonight, sleeping early, uh, and then um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. I also just recently received the ARC, the physical ARC for uh, Elder Epoch, um, and I'm in the process of uh, transferring over my tabs. There's a ridiculous amount already, as there always are for Samuel's books. Uh, so I received this in the mail, and I also just today received Lord and King, this beautiful, I love this color scheme. PL, like, I think this is my favorite cover in your series so far. <laughs> but I just received this beautiful book, from overseas, from PL, um, with a really nice inscription and everything, and I can't wait to get to it. But now that I have these two beauties, they have to fit on my shelf. <laughs> so I'm thinking tomorrow, hopefully I'll have some more energy to like physically stand up and like do stuff. So uh, I kind of have to rearrange my shelves. So that would be pretty fun to get for this vlog as well as me rearranging my shelves. So they also need to be dusted. So yeah, that might happen tomorrow. But whether it happens or not, I'll be sure to check back in with my reading updates. Actually, guys, I'm I'm tired <laughs> tonight. So we did we did two shelves and we fit the two new books on there. I just have to figure out where I'm gonna put the Black Coast and the Splinter King. But I think I'm gonna take this back up tomorrow because I went to a wedding today and I'm just I just ate a bunch of delicious pasta and baby and I were we're tired. So yeah, we're gonna finish this tomorrow. <laughs> It's the next day, and I haven't yet amassed the energy <laughs> to rearrange my bookshelf, which is probably a good thing because I just got a broken binding box in the mail. So I have, I'm part of their, their tier one subscription, have been since the beginning, and um, they had issues with the printers for the Great Leveler collection, the second part of the Abercrombie, or the second trilogy of second Abercrombie trilogy that's what I'm trying to say so I hadn't received anything in the mail for about two months but if this is the one that I think it is because I think their next trilogy um the Bone Ships by R.J. Barker I believe that that got printed first even before the Abercrombie ones and I've seen on Twitter some people have received theirs so I think that's what this is and it's absolutely stunning I cannot wait to open this and take a look at it. So let's open it together. Okay, I've always got, as always, their packaging is well done. If this is as gorgeous as I think it is, I'm probably gonna have to rearrange the shelves to fit it, to display it. So maybe it's a good thing that I haven't um, rearranged my shelves yet. I'm gonna tell myself that. <laughs> give myself that nice excuse <laughs> as to why I haven't had the energy to do it today. I find that when I go out and do things at this point in pregnancy that the next day I'm just shot and I just don't have the energy to do anything and that is holding true today as well. Yes, it is! Tide Child, so it's Tide Child trilogy, not the Bone Chips. Whoops. Oh, it is Bone Chips. I guess I'm just... The Bone Ships is the name of the first book. There we go. And Tide Child is the name of the trilogy. <laughs> so this is the bookmark. This was the book for April 2023. It says, I'll not deny the hag my love. Let us fly to her in pride. I'll not deny the hag my love. For duty have I died. So it sounds like it's a poem. That's from within this world. I've wanted to... So here's a... I think I showed that, but if I didn't present from myself to myself every time. 
<laughs> um, I've wanted to read this series for a really, really long time. Actually, I've always eyed it up. And that's why I ended up subscribing to The Broken Binding because they always seem to do that. Like the Lycanius trilogy as well is one that I've always wanted to read um, but didn't get around to. And they just always seem to pick ones that are exactly up my alley. So and give me a nice excuse to read them. Ooh. All right, here is the cover, the dust jacket cover. The bone chips, as usual, they keep the original cover. And then we have block sprayed edges on the top. And then one of the big show-stopping pieces are the stencil sprayed edges on these. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> That reminded me of Trolls too. Whoa, yes, it is just as beautiful as I had heard. Look at that foiling. Wraps around the spine all the way to the back. Broken binding, you really, really pulled out stops with this one. With the edges as well. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful, and the end papers on both sides and end papers are different Ooh. right look mm. at that wow all, you buy all the way around and look at the pages Ooh. they're gonna make one big picture oh i like it and that's so cool mm. also signed and it looks like there's a stamp there as well that's really cool yeah this is gorgeous i swear the broken binding gets better and better <laughs> with their designs. I cannot wait to have all three next to each other to show those pages. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm so tempted to put this on my shelf, like without the dust jacket or at least pages out because this is so pretty. You know, I'm in my mood reading mood and just looking at this, I kinda wanna pick this up. I started Lycanius, so let me follow through with that, but like this might have to happen, maybe later this week. I might have to throw out my TBR to read this because it just seems like something I would enjoy right now and it's so pretty. <laughs> anyway, so happy that I jumped on Broken Binding when I did because I know it's really hard to get on their subscription, so very happy to add this to my collection. Uh, we'll see where I can fit it on my shelf if I end up rearranging today or tomorrow, whichever one I end up doing. So this is the current state of the shelves. I am going to be getting, <clears throat> excuse me, some more book mail. So I think this is then going to end up shifting again. But uh, so far, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with it. This shelf really didn't change much. I did change my knickknacks. Um, I've got my Totoro balanced. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> um, I did change around these shelves a bit. Um, this one as well. This one hasn't changed, but these have really shifted down here. So, as well as the bottom shelves. So I'm not exactly sure, like I said, if I'm going to keep it this way, but it's nice to have it clean, honestly. Um, I've dusted. Also, I have to re-stick these on here. The sticky stuff is, is running it's not working well, so it, it falls off all the time. But, uh, yeah, I think the shelves are quite pretty. It was nice to go through my collection and enjoy looking at it again. And, uh, yeah, 
we'll see what it looks like when I get the rest of my book mail. Okay, uh, I just got back from the library. <laughs> I went there to get some stuff done. Uh, it was like a rainy spring day and um, my library is close enough to walk to. So I figured oh, I'll just go there, get some stuff done and I did. And then when I was leaving, the wind decided to act up just for a small period of time and it completely broke my umbrella. So my walk home was sans umbrella. <laughs> So I'm gonna go blow dry my hair, get in some dry clothes. Thankfully, everything I'd brought with me, I'd like double or triple like wrapped so nothing got wet besides me, but yeah. We're gonna go have to go take care of this real quick. <laughs> so it's the next day. I forgot to check in after I got soaking wet in the rain. I'll talk about reading later and how that went. But we are, we just got out of the hospital and his mom, was lovely and said for us to go get some really good food and she'll she'll cover us so we're getting unagi which is river eel right yeah so we have ponesenbe which is the spine of the river eel and then they bake it so it's crispy so it's like a little chip it's delicious we have some light vinegar vegetables. We also ordered <laughs> what's this been? Oh. <laughs> Unagi maki, right? Mm. Yeah. Egg. Egg roll. Unagi. Japanese omelette with unagi on the inside. Sounds nice. And then we'll get our full meal in a little bit. It's here! Hayato got the fancier yeah. version. Rice. Let's <laughs> The soup with the eel organ. Yes, it has eel organ in it. The soup itself is delicious. I just don't eat the organ in the middle. <laughs> so then order the other miso soup for you. The what? Ah, the miso soup. This oh, okay. Soup. So I have to order me. It's hard one-handed. Miso soup. Mm, red miso. Then I have the donburi, which is all in one bowl, not separate, like his. And I only have three pieces, not five. They also already put the sauce on mine. Oiso! This is the sauce for hot This is spicy for the eel. Yes. It's very, it has a very strong smell, like very earthy smell, I think, anyway. This is the place we just came from. That's the name up here. What was it? Yoshizuka? Nagiya. Mm. Delicious. I was very impressed, actually. The right amount of fluffy and crispy. Mm. Would highly recommend. All right, guys, so I figure it's time for an actual sit down check in. <laughs> the last couple of clips have been a bit scattered a little out there. Um, so I think the last one that was just like a little, little bonkers <laughs> was when I came back uh, soaking wet from uh, being caught in the rain. I think I put a picture of my umbrella, just the absolutely crushed umbrella from the wind. Um, you know, there's a point in time where an umbrella just becomes a hazard and you, your body becomes a projectile rather than it helping. And that was one of those moments. <laughs> um, so when I went to the library, I was writing some thank you cards for my, uh, for the people who gave us baby gifts. Um, it's late, <laughs> but I'm getting it done. And that's what matters. I feel like that's my mantra for at this point. Um, with things. So and after that, I was planning to settle in and read, but I ended up not doing that and <laughs> watching like Netflix and YouTube and stuff like that. And then the next day uh, was the hospital day and that was the day that I took the clip of uh, Hayato and I eating unagi. Absolutely delicious. I don't think I did a very good job of explaining it when we were there because we were really hungry <laughs> and I really wanted to eat rather than talk about the food. Uh, so essentially unagi, I think I did mention in the clip, is uh, river eel. 
and it looks gross like when it's alive like how could this taste good but i'm telling you the way that the japanese people make it it's it's delicious uh so it's grilled so a lot of the fat falls off and it's a perfect amount of fat if it's cooked well very fluffy and crispy on the outside and it has a very special sauce that i say very special it has a specific sauce <laughs> that you always eat it with um and then the green um so i'm looking for spice herb whatever that you saw in the video i don't know the english name for it i'm gonna have to google that um but essentially it's a chinese i think it's i think it's chinese chinese herb that is very very and what's our mm, fragrant there we go i'm forgetting english good lord it's very very fragrant and you know uh when you when you eat the smell is just as important as the taste um it really affects the taste so the fragrance really matches uh, unagi and it adds so much to it i don't know how do i love love that spice it does put your your tongue to sleep a little bit so it has a really interesting side effect <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we we really thoroughly enjoyed that. Unagi is very expensive, but like I said in the clip, I think I mentioned Hayato's mom, um, my mother-in-law said she would treat us to it. So it was very wonderful of her. So we enjoyed that. And then yesterday I had plans for when I came home from the hospital. I was like, all right, I'm going to get shit done. And then as what usually happens, <laughs> um, my, my energy battery just completely depleted. I ended up taking a nap, um, but when I woke up from the nap, I didn't really have much in me. So that was kind of the end of that day. I did plan to read, but again, just ended up kind of vegging out. Um, didn't have much left in my tank. So let's actually talk about what I did read since I've now just said twice that I planned to and I didn't. <laughs> Between those moments where I was planning on reading, like at, actually at the hospital itself when we had a lot of wait time, I did read but I'm reading not what's on my TBR, very mood reading-esque. Uh, right now I am binging the Vampire Academy series. I am on the fifth book in the series. There's six in the original series and this one I'm not, it's not as binge worthy as the first four. Um, Mead is very very good at taking YA tropes and treating them in a unique, more mature way. And she's very good at character work and like slowly world building and adding things to her world that make sense, you know, little by little. What she's not good at <laughs> is political scheming. And, you know, you, you just have to not think too hard about the logistics of situations, you know, for them to kind of make sense. And unfortunately, this one started with a heist and it's the most unbelievable thing I've ever read in my life. Like, I can't even suspend disbelief for this level of, like, come on, guys. <laughs> like, they planned for, like, two days, got one blueprint, and broke into a maximum security prison. Like, come on, y'all. Um, so that was the first, like, 30% of this uh, book. But I do trust me to take the events and do something interesting with the character dynamics. I see her kind of developing that. So I'm looking forward to that aspect. Hopefully um, it continues to feel binge worthy uh, later on in this book because I've been reading them on average like a day and a half. It takes me about a day and a half to read them, but this one's taking a bit longer because I'm not feeling the urge to pick it up so much. So maybe that's a sign that um, I should pick up something else. I don't know. So anyway, that's what I'm in the middle of reading right now. My audio for Assassin's Quest got returned. <laughs> so uh, I am not reading that right now. Um, and it's gonna take eight weeks to get it back from the library. Oopsie. So I don't think that book is gonna get done, even though I really did wanna start that. But I say that, but then I let it lapse. So maybe subconsciously I didn't want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, now I gotta wait eight weeks for that audiobook. So we'll see when I get my hands on that one. I haven't made any progress in the shadow of what was lost, but that's not for lack of interest. It's just when I have been reading, I've been out of the house and that huge book is not coming with me out of the house. So I've been reading whatever's on my Kindle, which is not that book. <laughs> so that's basically where I am reading right now is I'm just binging YA vampire urban fantasy and kind of living for it.
today it is a beautiful sunny day i just watered all of our plants you can see down here i've got the plants from inside they're outside getting some sun so uh, i'm gonna put these maybe i'll actually leave them out and then put them away when i come back i'm gonna take my my daily pregnancy walk <laughs> take my little breaks along the way on the benches that I've marked out and um, go get myself, I think, a lunch outside of the house. Uh, we do have food here, which is something I think I'll probably be telling my daughter many, many times throughout the life is we have food at home, but um, I'm gonna allow myself to ignore that fact <laughs> and maybe go get some lunch and do some editing outside of the house because it is beautiful day. Um, not a cloud in the sky. It's a little chilly in the shade, but the sun is gorgeous. So uh, Hayato has work all day today. So I am by my lonesome. So I'm gonna go, you know, take myself on a little date and enjoy that. The place I was gonna go for lunch is actually closed today. The one day I don't check. But this is a place I've never been to before that is nearby and I got myself a coffee float. I saved my caffeine today, so I'm so excited to enjoy this. Just sitting in the sun, reading urban fantasy. All right, so I am back <laughs> from my walk. Um, your girl's tired. I went farther than I planned. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to check back in. I did read up to about 50% into this next installment in um, Vampire Academy. I can never remember their names, so I don't remember what the name of, of this installment is, but I read to about 50% and I'm enjoying it so far. Actually, it's getting a bit better, so that's good. Uh, but I wanted to check back in specifically because if you don't know, Book Depository shut down randomly. They just announced it. Amazon shut it down, which just sucks horribly for people who live abroad like myself, because that was how I got basically the editions of books that I want. Uh, I have switched over to Blackwell's, I believe that's the name, uh, but it's a bit more expensive. So before Book Depository shut down, I put in like one kind of Hail Mary <clears throat> order of books that were specifically cheaper there than they were on Blackwell's or any other Kind of website so I ordered a whole bunch um, if they were like the cheapest there and one of the packages has arrived so I don't know what this is so we're gonna open it up together and see what I get what I get oh, yes oh that's so exciting oh, I thought it felt heavy and small I should have known so I got my Chiltern classic of sense and sensibility this is such a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Uh, I have Jane Eyre in this edition, and I plan to collect at least all of their flower editions of their classics. Comes with a ribbon bookmark, of course. And I have not read Sense and Sensibility, but I read my first Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, uh, earlier this year. Was it this year? I think it was this year <laughs> when, I, when I read Pride and Prejudice. Or was it last year? I think it was this year when I read it and I loved it. So now I have full faith that I'm gonna enjoy Jane Austen. And this, uh, like I said, I wanna collect, especially all of the flower editions of these, but this was the only one that was on sale enough to be cheaper than other websites. And I don't need them urgently. So this is the only one that I got from the collection this time around, but it is so pretty. Oh my gosh, and the papers have like this glossy finish to them. Mm -mm -mm. Stunning. I cannot wait. This is one of those um, like editions that you can actually read. It's like made to read. So cannot, cannot wait to get to this. And it's so pretty. I have to rearrange my shelves now <laughs> to fit this on there. Hello. It is the next day. Uh, Hato and I just got back from doing a baby care class. So we learned how to bathe our baby, baby girl when she comes. Uh, which could be, you know, at any point at this at this point. So uh, then Hato is at work currently, but this morning before we went to the baby class, we made um, cinnamon rolls, or we did the prep for cinnamon rolls, and we put them in the fridge, and then I had to take them back out and put them at <clears throat> um, uh, room temperature and let them rise for a second time before we make them. So. 
uh, when he is going to be coming home from work. We're going to make some cinnamon rolls, which is very exciting. Uh, nothing better than homemade cinnamon buns. But in the meantime, I've got some cleaning to do. I really try to resist taking a nap. See? I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'm gonna end up taking a little nap <laughs> and then probably doing the cleaning that I plan to do. Uh, I also read quite a bit more in, see, I can't remember the name of any of the installments. The fifth installment of Vampire Academy. I am 65%, I think, into that now. So if I can read a little bit of that, maybe I'll read that until I fall asleep uh, and then do the stuff around the house that I was talking about. Um, little one was kicking me all night, so I did not get much sleep. These dark circles, you know, they're probably here to stay at this point. <laughs> but um, yeah, so let's see if I can catch up on a little bit of that now. But I'll be sure to check back in with you guys once we've got some ooey gooey cinnamony goodness. Oh, Inya. Oh, sugar is melting. So we've taken them out. We've got our fresh cream cheese frosting that we're gonna put on. And we're gonna enjoy. Look at that. Look at that perfect pull inside. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we can fight over the one in the very middle. Humble, humble, and show. Yeah? Janke. <laughs> Janke. <laughs> hey, the icing. About two days ago, Hayato woke up in the morning from sleeping, and the first words out of his mouth were, I want homemade cinnamon buns. <laughs> yeah. They were in your dreams somewhere, yeah. so we made it happen. We saw. Dream come true. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Okay, so this is another one of those, I don't know what day it is, I just woke up from a nap <laughs> check-ins. I tend to do those on my balcony, I guess. <laughs> but I want to come on here to complain about the fifth book in Vampire Academy. What was the name of it? Hold on, let me actually get these names down. Okay, so I'm on the sixth book now, which is Last Sacrifice. I got it from the library. and 3% in. I started that before I fell asleep. So the fifth book is Spirit Bound. Okay, so the fourth one, Blood Promise. Didn't mean to open that. Oops. <laughs> no, I don't wanna, there we go. So we have Blood Promise is the fourth one, Spirit Bound, and then Last Sacrifice. So Blood Promise <clears throat> is one that, uh, the one that was on my TBR, <laughs> and now I've read the fifth one and um, 
I'm reading the sixth one now, uh, because I decided to just binge the series to just let myself live in my my YA um, urban fantasy, let my let myself live those vibes for a little while. So the fourth one was very good. I felt like that one was the growing pains book of the series where if a YA series goes on long enough and the characters continue to age, the author needs to have them age out of their current position. So in this case, you know, like graduating school or aging out of, you know, whatever environment they were in before. And that comes with growing pains for the characters. Now, when I was younger, and I think that's still the case for people who are in the younger, the younger age group who reads books, you know, YA books as well, people tend to not like those those installments because it involves changing a lot of character archetypes or um, changing the environment that people came to love, right? So a lot of people don't like those books. But I loved the fourth book for that very reason. Um, I could see why people thought it might have been boring, you know, like, oh, they don't do as much, there's not as much action or whatever. But I really loved the way that Mead handled character growth and and the characters really dealing with some harsher realities of the larger world. So I had really high hopes going into the fifth book, which is Spiritbound. There we go. <laughs> um, listen, that book was not good. I initially gave it three stars, but upon like reflection and when I think about it more, I think I might drop it down to like a 2.5, maybe even a two, because <laughs> Mead just she she performed character assassination on, on so many of the characters in this book. All of the growth that we saw in the fourth book was non-existent. Like it was like it disappeared, or the characters regressed in the fifth book. Rose was just such oh my god, she was such a selfish pain in the ass this whole book. And again, I don't. I've said many many times on my channel, I don't mind unlikable characters you know you can have a bitch of a character I'm, I love es Eska from um from the war eternal like I you can get me with the bitch character but the point is that Rose is not supposed to be that you're supposed to like her and understand her that's the perspective that you're supposed to be coming from with her and I don't know why me would write her the way that she did in the fifth book. It's, you know, I, I thought at first, oh, she's gonna have Rose make a really big mistake in the beginning, beginning which, which she does, um, that affects other people and she's gonna learn from that. No, no learning anywhere. She's just continuously just treating other people like shit the whole book. And the problem is it's a first person perspective. So like, we're stuck with her. <laughs> We're just stuck with her the entire time. Um, also, the first fourth of the book, like, me decided to write about a heist. And I'm like, this is not, this is not your strong suit. Because <laughs> the, the heist was planned in, like, two nights. They got one set of blueprints really easily, by the way. Um, so even acquiring what they needed to get this, to, to do this heist was really easy. Um... And I just, it was the most unrealistic thing. <laughs> like, I can put aside a lot of things, you know, I can, I can suspend my disbelief in a lot of ways, uh, especially with a series like this, but it was just, mm -mm. I was like, the whole time I was like, really? <laughs> and it was like the first fourth of the book. So yeah, just no. Um, then the, the middle of the book was again, just Rose being a whiny, whiny little pain in the ass um I was also really sick of the the melodrama because it was like the same I'm not going to give away any plot points but basically the romance aspect of this has become a hamster wheel it is the same shit different day over and over and over again uh in the middle of this book and that was so annoying I was like I get it can we move on which is a shame because I've praised the the romance part of these books all the way through up until this point and the end finally got some interesting world building some interesting you know um, plot points were introduced at the end finally but yeah I just mm -mm. I would I just had to come on here and complain because I don't know what happened with Spiritbound there but it was it was not good 
but there's only one book left in the series so i'm gonna go straight through <laughs> and binge this book the sixth book uh read a, lo a lot of it today i think this morning my time was a tessa grattan's interview for page chewing so i had to get up really early to do that one so that's why i took a nap after um so baby and i really we passed out for a while there i didn't check in yesterday because it was a really bad day physical health wise for me i just my stomach was upset i was having heartburn my hips were sore it's just it was not a good day um, it wasn't a good day emotionally either. Um, at this point in pregnancy, I know that your hormones really start to act up again, so it's not too surprising, but some days are just really, really hard. That's just, you know, pregnancy is not all rainbows and butterflies and, you know, glo you're glowing. Like, <laughs> some days just suck, and yesterday sucked. So I didn't check in <laughs> here yesterday, but today I'm doing better. Uh, kind of press the reset button. So it is now the afternoon. So I think my goal is to um, do a couple things, some housekeeping stuff that I didn't get to yesterday. Um, all of these plant babies need to be watered. It's now really warm here. So, um, you know, they need to be watered more often. And then I think I'm just going to go take a little walk outside, you know, sit somewhere that's not my house <laughs> and binge read some of this. I really hope that the sixth book is better and Mead brings it home and there's just one dud in the series, but we'll see. I realized actually that there was something that I forgot to complain about with Rose <laughs> earlier, which is that in Spirit Bound, look at me remembering the titles of the books now, she completely ignores and mistreats both parties of the love triangle. She, to one of them, she is completely dismissive and really disrespectful of his feelings and treats him like shit, like at, like at convenience she'll engage him. And then the other part of the triangle, I'm trying not to be too spoilery here, but she completely ignores his wishes when he directly says, this is what I need from you, or this is what I need you not to do. This is what, my boundaries are she completely ignores all of the boundaries that he sets like and he sets them very intentionally and it frustrates me because up until this point Mead has really done a good job of showing what a healthy respectful relationship might look like but in this book she completely dropped the ball and I I felt like we were supposed to still be on Rose's side but she was in the wrong the entire time and I just I hated how she treated her love interests it was just it was gross and it really made me dislike her a lot okay so I am back from my walk I met Hayato he's home from work now yay yeah I waddled waddled is more accurate <laughs> I'm back from my waddle I read another chapter while I was out at the park and then like I said I met Hayato I'm just home from work and when we came home, I had two uh, books from the book depository order that I made. I mentioned earlier in this vlog. So let's see which ones have come in. I think I'm not the only one doing this, buying up all the stuff that was cheaper on book depository for the closed. Oh, yay. Oh, this is exciting. So I have The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. This is a middle grade by the same person who wrote The House with Chicken Legs. And I was so, so lucky to be gifted The House with Chicken Legs uh, from Leanne Over and Leanne Reed. So thank you for uh, sending that to me. But I really enjoyed that book. And I've been wanting to collect these paperback, like beautiful paperback editions. And for some reason, The Girl Who Speaks Bear, the new website, Blackwell's, didn't have this version of this book. They had this version of other books that she's written, but they didn't have this one. So I wanted to make sure that I got this while I could. I just think it's so beautiful. You can see the others in the collection here. So there's the House of Chicken Legs, and I still would like to collect these two as well. Uh, but I ate that book up in one sitting, and I've been wanting to pick up a middle grade actually, like very, ooh, it's got borders, all right. Um, 
I've just been looking for something to kind of sweep me away. And there's some internal illustrations. Okay, middle grade paperbacks. <laughs> Putting in the production value, another illustration. Wow, I'm very excited to get to this one now. So I think this is gonna look so beautiful next to the one that I already own. All right, let's get the second one. It feels quite thin. So this might be a novella. I'm feeling this is probably gonna be a novella. Yes, it is. All right. So I can tell by the back of this is gonna be, yep, a Miss Born the Secret History. These mini novella hardbacks match the UK paperbacks that I'm collecting for the entire series. So I knew I wanted to purchase them eventually just to have a full collection, you know, of the Cosmere in this cover format. Uh, but I wasn't in a rush. But then again, when I compared prices and how much it would be overall, it was just cheaper to get it from Book Depository before they close. So I now have The Secret History in its own little little hardback form. I also have Arcanum Unbounded, and that has a lot of novellas in it. Like, um, I think it has The Emperor's Soul in there as well. So that one I haven't bought individually, but I think I bought two. This one, and I think I'm also waiting for Edge Dancer. Uh, those two are, you know, separate from Arcanum Unbounded, so I wanted to have a copy for my collection. Brandon Sando. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, mm. You're cute. <laughs> so that makes three of like, I think I bought maybe eight or nine books um, at the final, at the end there, so that makes three of them. Eight or nine? Uh-huh. Only if they were significantly cheaper. Okay. Eight or nine. I just, I just shocked by the number. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't that expensive, I promise. <laughs> um, so these two, plus the absolutely beautiful edition of Sense and Sensibility that I got earlier in this vlog. Um, yeah. So we'll see which one's coming next. So we are about to change the water. Um, Hayato put like a, a very bacteria rich water in here to let everyone have a feast before we change everything. So it's not usually this dirty, but look at how many shrimp. <laughs> it's, it's a takeover. One, it's two, insane. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Don't ten, even eight, try. <laughs> also one of the fish died. So the shrimp are taking care of that right quick. Like we don't, it's hard to even track when a fish passes away because they eat them so fast. Mm. Uh, Sometimes we can see the fish bone. Yeah, we usually see it when it's at the, the bone stage. So I just, that's bonkers. We do have some snails still, but that's been brought under control mm. at least. Yeah. There are some baby fish in here as well, but. What do you, if anyone knows in the comments down below, what, what do you do about a shrimp population explosion? What can balance that in this environment? Please tell us. Okay, so everything after this clip is after the birth of my beautiful daughter. Uh, she uh, came into the world a bit earlier than we expected uh, due to some medical complications. I ended up checking into the hospital earlier than my due date and she's now with us. So needless to say, there's a bit of a gap between the previous clips and the next couple clips, <laughs> about a month and a half to, uh, to be exact. Uh, but for now, just enjoy the beautiful rain sounds uh, from this clip. It's officially rainy season now in Japan, and I thought you guys would enjoy this as a little transition.
So we haven't been here in how many years? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah. How long has it been since we've been here? Two, three? No way. More than that. It was before we were married. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> so before we were married. So I think it's been like three or four years. Shirai Tonataki. It's a waterfall. And last time we came here, we were hiking. I'm still recovering from childbirth though, so no hiking today. This is new. They didn't have this last time. They must have rebranded. So they have nagashi somen, which is thin noodles that Japanese people eat in the summer. And the traditional way to eat it is you let it go down a bamboo chute and you catch it with chopsticks. And last time, I did pretty good. I won though. We might have to have a rematch this time around. You can see up there they have it. Beautiful day. Cute. That's where you do the nagashi somen. So we got our nagashi somen. So this is somen. Super thin noodles. This is the sauce that you dip it in. And here's the bamboo shoot that you toss it down. Then if you, you're supposed to try to catch it in time, of course. But if you don't catch it, it falls down here, and you can just pick it up after to eat it. Ara! You're supposed to wait! Sneaky. I'm hungry. <laughs> Alright, let's see. How do we determine the winner here? How do we know who wins? Uh, so let's close your eyes and wait. Okay. And then I say, I release, and then if you catch it, you'll win it. Wait, but, <laughs> but that's no fun if what? you can't see it. Oh, you mean, okay, so how about this? We'll do a couple practice rounds, and then we'll try that. Okay. Is that good? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> She's she's becoming serious now. So it's chance to do it. Hey hey hey! Yes. Go! Oh no, I dropped two! <laughs> anyway. Hi, it goes up. Oh shit. 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 I think I remember. The rule is you uh, can't keep your chopsticks down there. You can only do two seconds outside of the grabbing motion. Alright? Alright. Alright. I think I'm ready. Nikimas. Hi. I tell you when I drop it. Okay. So three, two, one, then I drop it. Okay. Oh, I haven't dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey, you you open your eyes. No. No. 
All right, here we go. I'm recording officially now. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> oh. Did you, did you count? What? I think that it's fine. There was no rule for how fast. Mister used my other hand to check the location just yeah. before. I, I, I was closer. You think? Yeah. We'll so let I, the people in the comments decide if we put this up. <laughs> Who's closer? Have the chopsticks in the water. Uh huh. <laughs> but my timing was perfect. Table. My timing was perfect. So. Well, even though your timing was perfect, you couldn't get it. You couldn't either. <laughs> I had a chance. I had a chance. <laughs> no chance. All right. Let us know who won. I'm hungry though, so let's actually do it now. <laughs> These are terribly made dangos. Hmm. <laughs> it's warm. Is it not supposed to be? It's warm. But it's good, right? Mm. Mm. Just messy. Hmm. Mochi. been at least a month and a half since the last time I like sat down to film anything for this vlog. Um, life has changed a little bit. I have given birth. <laughs> so my daughter is now in the world. So for the last month and a half, I've been completely focused on her, which I mean, sorry, not sorry, but that's how things have been. I have been living in this pajama two-piece set that my mom got me. <laughs> Uh, and now Hayato is on paternity leave, so the two of us have kind of figured out a schedule, uh, mostly. Um, she's now entering a phase where contact napping is the only thing she wants to do. Uh, so as soon as we put her in her actual bed or like bas bassinet, we get 15 minutes max out of her um, most of the time. Once you put her in there, the world is over, the sky is falling, how dare you torture me like this mother, <laughs> essentially. But I did put her in there um, about five minutes ago and it seems like I might actually get a decent sleep out of her. I don't know, she's catfished me with this before, but we'll see. So I thought I would take the opportunity to film a little bit. Uh, Hayato is now on paternity leave. I don't think I already said that, did I already say that? See, I'm not used to filming anymore. <laughs> uh, but that means that we're kind of getting into a schedule and I wanna try to film here and there. I'm not promising anything, but I figured a good place to start is to at least close off this vlog because if I remember correctly, there were some really good things that I filmed that I really wanted to put in this vlog. Um, at least I think, it's hard for me to remember. <laughs> But either way, I think I was excited about the footage that I got and uh, I wanted to get it out to you guys. I also did film the Nagash Somen, um, where we like grabbed the noodles as they went down the slide. That was after she was born, but it was uh, while my parents were still here in Japan. Uh, they came over after she was born and gave us so much help in the first month of her life. Like, I, I don't know what we would have done without them. So they gave us a, a whole day. They said, go out and have a date day. And so we did the Nagash Soman on that day. So that was post-birth, but the all the other ones were pre-birth. Um, so I haven't watched all of the clips that I've taken, clearly, because I don't remember what was in it. I figured I would just close this out and just say, you know, a new phase in my life has started. Uh, I plan to talk more about what I want to do on my channel and updates and all that in a more official video, like a sit down video, whatever. Um, I think I'll film my um, meteor freak out tag because it is halfway through the year, which is just fucking bonkers. Like I, what? <laughs> 
Uh, so I do plan to film that and maybe I'll like combine that with like an update, you know, video or whatever. But I wanted to close this out and then as I watch it back and edit when I find time to do that, um, I'll see if there's anything I need to address, anything I need to close out or say, and I will film that, confusingly enough, probably in an intro or an extra outro at the end of this after I watch it back. Uh, so I'll probably look different. You know what? Who am I kidding? I'm not going to look different. I mean, I'm good. I'm going to be wearing this because this is what I live in. Either way, though, I am happy to say that I feel like I can focus on books again. Uh, I read a middle grade in this past month and a half, and it's the only thing that I've read all the way through. But I did start Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett, and I am enjoying myself immensely. And I also started reading my Japanese edition of Winnie the Pooh. I don't know why I chose now to do that, but I did. <laughs> so maybe in the future, you know, I'm practicing to read it out to her. Um, but we'll see what I do with those two. I am still a Spiffbo judge for Spiffbo 9. I agreed to take on that role and I have not started reading any of the Slush Pile books uh, yet, so I need to get on that. Um, besides that, things are just kind of up in the air and I'm gonna read what I want to read. Um, I was really enjoying doing vlogs before and it's kind of nice to sit down and, and, and film in between uh, when I have time, so I'm very lucky to have Hayato, you know, on paternity leave, so I might be able to do vlogs um, rather than sit down videos, because honestly, sitting down to talk here and there rather than doing a whole filming setup, you know, and makeup and all that um, for an official video. I don't know why I keep calling it that because these vlogs are official videos too, but you get what I'm saying. A sit down video. Um, honestly, these might be easier, so we'll just see what works for me. But I do at least want to film my um, mid-year freak out tag because I love filming that every year and uh, that would be really fun as my first video back um, you know it's not my first I can't talk let's try this again I always enjoy filming that video and it would be fun to have that be my first sit down video back after this break there we go words that's what I wanted to say as for updates on my daughter and things like that, Hayato and I still kind of have to talk about what we're comfortable sharing and not sharing on the on the internet. Um, I have already shared, you know, pictures of her and stuff like that, uh, so that's not a mystery. But just how much I want her to be mentioned or involved in the channel, you know, we'll see um, how that kind of pans out in the future. But either way, she's healthy, she's happy, and um, you know, it's going to be a new phase of my life. So we'll just see how the content adjusts to work with that. I would do my whole like let me know in the comments down below what you think of things and all of that but i don't know if this is going to be like the last clip if i'm going to add something even if there is another clip leave a comment down below <laughs> with thoughts on whatever i filmed at the beginning of this whatever books i was reading <laughs> um thoughts on motherhood parenting you know whatever i would love to hear what you guys have to say and start kind of the conversation in this booktube space again if this is the last clip, editing Taylor, keep this in. If it's not, you know, cut it out and do it. <laughs> do another one later. But but for now, I'm gonna head out. Jenny.